how are we all doing today? So my name is Sarah Parkinson, I'm a children's author and illustrator. I have written two books, I should probably put my cup of tea to tell you this. Oh, I have written two books, The Shoe Foxes and Dragonfly Pie in my series so far. I'm now working on my next book um, to be released later this year. Um, and today we're going to be drawing fa um, Father's Day cards. Um, and so I have written these books and I have done the illustrations. Um, I'll give you a little peek inside one of them. Let's have a look, see if anybody's online today. How are we doing? My comments aren't appearing on Facebook yet. Is everybody there on Facebook? Hello, hello. Let's have a little look inside. See some, some geese in Dragonfly Pie. A grebe, we learn about the grebe in Dragonfly Pie. <laughs> so a few little peeks inside a couple of my books there. Um, so yes, we'll be drawing some Father's Day cards today. Who's ready? Hello, Cora. Hello, Oliver, age eight. Nice to see you. Hello, yes, let's see some names and ages. Let's see who's here. Ooh, I'm excited. Let's see. So we've got Zoe here as well. Um, let's see. We've got Harrison, Roman and Poppy Rose. Lovely to see you. Hello, Alessia. Hello. Big waves, everybody. Hello. Can we hear your names, please? Unless it's the grown-ups, then that's absolutely fine as well. <laughs> oh, Daisy, age 11. Hello, Daisy. Hello, got Harrison, Rome, and Poppy Rose. We've got Nate. We've got Evie, age 6. Lovely to see you. Nice to see you. Oh, and Nate, you sent me, um, your mum sent me some lovely pictures of you last week. Love seeing the pictures of you guys doing these lives. So, grown-ups, if you're watching, please send me some pictures of the uh, kids doing the lives. It's lovely. Oh, I missed them. Let's see. Um, Scarlett and Sylvie. Hello, guys. Hello. Got Amber May and Lola. Amber May's eight and Lola's four. Lovely to see you guys. Libby and Harriet. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Jack. Hi, Jack. Let's have a look. Who else are we missing? Who else? Where are we up to? <gasps> ah, this is what I get, isn't it? For scrolling backwards and forwards. Um, so we've got Harriet, age five. Hello. We've got Iman. We've got Annabelle. We've got Jessica. Bear with me, guys, because I just want to get hellos out to everybody because it makes you so happy to hear your names, doesn't it? So let's have some likes. Let's see some loves. Callie, age six. We've got Noah. We've got Lucas and Lara. Lovely to see you. We've got William, age nine. We've got Emily, age ten. Dylan, age eight. We've got a good range of ages on today. That's fantastic. Uh, we've got Ruby and uh, Jonah, age six and three. Yes, there's something for everybody here today. Iman is seven. We've got Henry and George. We've got Drew. Oh, so lovely to see Henry and George as well. My, they've been in from the beginning, Henry and George. Give me some love if you've been in from the beginning. From when we first went in lockdown. Oh, I'm glad you like my skirt. It's been on before. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Cora, Eloise and, if I said that right, well, Eloise and um, Lila, oh, beautiful names, hello Iris, hello Charlie, aged eight there, Ted, aged nine, hello Yusuf, oh, hello Yusuf, oh, I miss seeing your drawings, Yusuf, you do some lovely drawings for me, Ella, lovely to see you, aged seven, Zach, aged three, is waving hello too, hello, Zafira says hello again, hello Sunny, oh, uh, Elena, is that right? Right, age seven, lovely. Oh, we've got Ben and Alex watching as well. Hi. Oh, we like to draw an albino python. Ooh, well, if you do if you do my python today, if you're doing white, is albino. Albino. Who else have we got watching? We've got Charlotte, age five. We've got Izzy, age 11. We've got Sophie and Mayer, age six. <gasps> Elena Miller and Jacob. Oh, <laughs> we've got Ella, age five, and Owen, age ten. We've got Phoebe and Esmeralda, age nine and six. I'm nearly done, guys. Kerry's age seven. We've got Claire, age 39. <laughs> Hi, Claire. Oh, I miss you. Um, we've got Emily, age ten. Charlotte, age seven. <gasps> Maisie, age... Oh, goodness me. We've got Ma uh, Maisie and Noah, age ten. Finn and Frankie. And um, we've got Millie 
and Hayden, got Millie age eight and Hayden age seven. We've got Erin, eight years old, and we've got Anna and um, with her son Iman as well. Hello, guys. Hello, Caitlin. Always love to see some of the some of the old faces as well. We've got Owen as well. Oh, so lovely to see what we've got. Who else have we got? Um, okay, we've got Ted and Hannah, and we've got Rachel age 43. <laughs> Hey, I want to see your drawings as well. <laughs> Grown-ups, get yourself a cup of tea. We've got um, oh, Lucy, age two, and Mummy, hello. Mm. Cups of tea, guys. Get the cups of tea. It's very important. Use this time whilst you can. Make sure we've got lots of paper in front of the in front of the kids, and pens. If you've got pens or pencils or crayons, whatever we want to do. So. Let's have a look at some of the cards we're going to be doing today. So this is just different ways that you can use the drawings that I'm that I'm doing today. So we've got a snake with. Should we see what it says? It says this Father's Day, have a big squeeze from me, and then you can put love from Sophia, age eleven, <laughs> or Amelia, age seven. I've got Owen watching with you, he's 10, lovely. Hi, Owen. Uh, Amelia says hi as well. Hi, everyone. Hello, Sophia. George, age six. I hope I've not missed anyone. Big love to all of you. Right, so that's our snake. We've got sloth and baby sloth. Do you know what? As you go along, you will see how lovely these can go as well. And we've got lovely baby cub as well. And you guys are going to be able to do this. I'll show you. I'll show you as we go along all the different things you can do with them, how we can make them. Uh, oops, how we can make them look different. I have done my Y the wrong way around on the bottom of there, so <laughs> I have to do all these backwards, you know, so it works on the lives. I hope you appreciate this. I can't use these cards unless people want to look in them in a mirror. <laughs> I had this genius idea that I. Oh my goodness! I've just realised. <gasps> Oh, goodness me. There's a vital thing missing from me today. Oh, my goodness. Hang on a second. <laughs> West? West? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to wait for two seconds for me because my pens are downstairs. <laughs> Give me two seconds. I can't very well do these without my pens, can I? Sorry, my husband was on a very important call at the same time as well, so he couldn't even get them for me. <gasps> what a rookie error. Let's get on with this, shall we? Let's get on. Let's get drawing. We're going to start easy. And we're going to draw a snake. <laughs> I can't believe I left my pens downstairs. Oh, dearie me. Let's see. Sorry about that, guys. Right. So we've got Ellie, age 10, Bobby, age 7, Love Sloth, we've got some good ones, Bethan, we've got Ellie, we've got Amelia. <sighs> Lovely. We need to do the hand exercises, good, good reminding there, there we go, that's what's next on the list. So everyone, anybody who's new to me, remember that we need to do hand exercises, because just like when you do anything, so you'll need to twist your wrists like this for me, like any sportsman or sportswoman, <laughs> you need to do your exercises, don't you? Or your warm-ups to get all of your muscles and everything working properly. And I always do this before I do any drawing, especially when I've been running up and down stairs. <laughs> because it just helps to get things supple and working properly. Let's do this. Reggie and Percy say hi. Hi. <laughs> it's funny. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, Iman is seven and a sister. Zoya is three. And she also wants to join the witch. Fantastic. Hello, Tilly. Hi, everybody. Oh, we've got a good showing on Facebook today. That's fantastic. Okay. So, and a good one on Instagram as well. It's always just a bit smaller on Instagram for some reason. Never know why. <sighs> Bella and Sophie. Hi, guys. <laughs> my mum's telling me to take big deep breaths. It's always good to have your mum on hand, isn't it, to tell you these things. Okay, now imagine that you're lifting up weights with those fingers. I, I, 
of the tiger cub that we're going to draw today. Right, okay. Nice deep breaths. As Mama, Mama P says, let's draw a snake. Now, when you're drawing your snake, you can either do it straight on the card like I've done here, or it's not cheating if you want to do it on a separate piece of white paper and then stick it on afterwards, like I've done with my tiger cub here, okay? So if you wanted to do it, do it as a little practice and then do it again, and just pick the ones that you want to do, you can then pick the right one and then put it onto your card, because I don't know about you, but I don't have a massive amount of card in my house at the moment, it's running low. <laughs> so get yourself, uh, get your drawings on and then stick them onto the card. You can make sure your very best one goes onto your card. Okay, also doing it on here as well. Okay. Oh, who's ready for slots in a second as well? So we're going to start easy on our snake. Got a bit of a jungle theme going on today, haven't we? So I've got a uh, little friends hanging out. Don't know if that guy's going to stay there. I may have to move the little uh, the little monkey. Let's see if he'll stay there for me. Right. Make sure you can all see. Right, our, t our snake is super easy and such a great one to warm up on. So what I want you to grab, if you've got um, a black and a green, or you can do them in pencil first, I would definitely recommend, if you're a type of person who likes to kind of make little changes as you go along, do it in pencil first and then use, uh, use colours afterwards. Get this nice and clean. Ready? Okay, so we need to have, oh hang on, make sure I've got everything ready here, okay. So we need to draw some eyes, don't we? Now some of you have, have started, have used, this is your first time, so I'll show you the way that I do my eyes where they look really nice and shiny. If you're a bit, if you're one of the bigger kids, please be patient because it does sometimes used to do a squish circle it does sometimes take a little bit longer just to explain but just bear with me so squash circle oval and I want you to draw two circles inside hope you can see that do it a bit bigger for a bit bigger here for you two circles inside and then colour in everything around those circles. Okay, so there's one eye. Okay, and then we're going to do another eye. Uh, let's see how big we want to do it, a bit further away. And maybe you might usually do two circles, colour around the outside. There we go. Are we all following along. So much fun already. Just watching me run, run up and down stairs and being daft, isn't it? <laughs> right, okay. So our snake. There's two eyes and it's going to have a little nose here. Now that you're wondering, how would you do a snake's nose from the front? I'll show you. He's going to be really cute too. It's not going to be a scary one, he's going to be super cute. So I want you to draw um, two little black dots here and here. So not too low, just a little bit lower than where the eyes are in the middle. Then I want you to get your green if you're working straight in pens. And you're just going to draw a little rainbow shape on top. <laughs> what are we thinking? Okay. Back to the black. Back to black. We're going to now 
do a little smile on our little snake and his head's going to be another squish circle, another oval round like this. So we don't want it to go too low again. We want it all to be quite tight up here. Okay, and we're just going to do from the centre a little swoop. Always helps to do the noise. Swoop. He's a happy little snake. Okay, all following. And then, oh, can't see. If you can't see the board, try re signing into the live or try on try on uh, Instagram or another or another uh, uh, program because it is working. It's just sometimes the phones don't like to agree. So, nice oval around the outside. Ready? Quite tight in. You don't want it to be unless you, unless you want it to be a very full snake, very chubby snake. <laughs> okay. Oh, please, could you slow down? Sorry, Daisy. You just keep an eye on where it's up to, and remember, you can always watch back as well. I always try these things a few times before I get to this stage, even with, you know, doing this now. I draw it a few times. Okay, so we're going to draw then a neck. Well, I suppose it's all one big long neck, isn't it? I suppose. But we're going to draw the starts of our snake down this way and it's going to go... Whoop, and it's going to go inwards a bit. Can you see? It doesn't go straight down. It goes from the edge of here, if you imagine. And then rolls down like that. Can you see? Take it nice and slow me. Lovely. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to do a curved line at the bottom of our snake here. Now imagine as well that this snake is going, that the body of the snake is going like this, isn't it? So don't turn too quickly. All right. Lovely. And then we're going to have our snake. Now, this would be the point on the card where it would go off. So if you are doing it straight onto the card, it would then go off onto the other side. So you just need to make a little mark on the other side of your card where it will be going to. If you're just going to be sticking it on afterwards, you can figure all this out afterwards. But pretty much you'll just want to kind of do, make a little road. <laughs> With your snake. And there's a great way to make a big, like they're all rolling them up in this pythons. Rolling round. Your dad giving him a big squeeze. Not a fatal one. <laughs> there we go. So... Just follow the line along like your road and then give it a curved edge. Like that's where, the, it almost looks like that's where the snake's ending, doesn't it? But it's not. <laughs> I can't find my rubber. Oh no. Okay. Then we're going to draw some sausages on top, getting a bit smaller each time. Okay. So start with one sausage. Like that. And then maybe it goes a little bit smaller this way as well. Because it goes... Oh, it wasn't that much smaller. <laughs> as it goes to the end of the snake, it all tapers off, doesn't it, into a point. Now, do you like a snake fact? Oh, now, one thing. I will tell you a snake fact in, fact in a second. But we also need to leave a, a little hole, don't we, for your, di your dad's eyes to be po poking through and his big squeeze, can you see? So, I'll just draw a little shape like that, like another little rainbow on there. Curved edges. Ooh, that's possibly a little bit tall. We do want it to be getting smaller. Goodness me, we all mess up, don't we? That's why they put rubbers on pencils. 
okay and then a little bit smaller a little bit smaller up into a tip how's it going hope we're all having a good time there we go oh, i'm glad it's looking good don't worry you can catch up later we're going on youtube later on today i want to try and make sure it gets up on youtube later on the um, at least for tomorrow morning okay and we want to draw some little eyes just in there and then two little arms sticking out as well <laughs> there we go now you could either colour that bit in dark I can't really do it that well in here or else these eyes will disappear unless I do them white I might do little white eyes and then you can get the idea but you don't have to draw too much detail or you can draw the face in if you feel like you want to draw your dad's face in there bet he'd like that <laughs> being constricted goodness me having a big gold hug now you can make your snakes look you can either call you can either leave it albino albino or um you can oh um you can ask grown-ups for help if you are stuck with your internet connection otherwise stay with me um you can to add little marks on um we can you can either try and draw scales just little circles which look absolutely awful in this pen I have to say or you can just do a little I do little squiggles you can do any colour you like I reckon you guys are ready for your next drawing soon what do you think have a little colour though, it's nice to colour in all together, isn't it? There we go. How are we getting on? Oh, we're doing well, I think. I want to see some pictures of these later. What do you think? This one is a nice and easy one for you hopefully it was easy don't worry if not there's some people that had trouble last week on the easier ones and then did absolutely fantastic on the uh ones that i found a bit harder when we drew when we drew stags last week and i saw some fantastic stags who did some good stags daisy amelia so yeah, get some nice colouring in. A little trick with the colouring in as well, if we look back to mine. Where's my other one gone? If you've got pencils, try and stick him out from the side. Hello. If you colour in hard around the outside and then lighter on the inside, it means it's less work as well if you've got colouring pencils. There we go. There we go. And you can colour it in there. You can see the detail a bit more on the uh, on the eyes there as well. And the nose. Maybe some little ideas on what you can do. And there's little bits of shading that you can do as well. Okay. So we will have to move on so that we've got more time. But if you wanted to do some shading, not with black. <laughs> do it with like a dark green can do it on the bottoms of each of the little sausages that you've drawn makes it look a bit more real doesn't it so do it with dark green if you've got a dark green maybe add a shadow okay I think that is looking pretty good okay we're ready for our next one because what you can always do is come back later or come back to coloring later don't worry 
Oh, oh, my monkey's gone. He's fallen off. Don't know if you could even see him anyway. Well, YouTube could. On my YouTube video that'll go up later. Right, next. Get a fresh piece of paper. You can come back to colouring later. We're going to be doing our sloth. Don't worry if you're behind. Oh, oh thank you, Claire. Lovely stuff. So we're going to be drawing sloths next. We're going to do a nice Father's Day card. We've got some dads or granddads or maybe godparents or gosh, I can't think of anyone else that you might give them to. Just give one to your mum. <laughs> give one to your mum as well. Why not? Uh, let's see. So next we're going to do our sloth. And to start off our sloth, we are going to need, so colours wise, um, let's see, we're going to need, we're going to need a black. I've got a dark brown and a light brown to do mine with. Let's see how you get on. Oh, and also a green for some trees as well. Lovely jubbly. Okay. So our sloth is going to be hanging and going, so I mean, on my card it's landscape, so it's not that way, it's that way. So make sure you've got enough space to be able to draw all your body and everything. And now you know what's coming, it makes life a little bit easier, doesn't it? So let's start by drawing some very cute eyes. So big circle. Two little circles inside. Lovely. Colour the rest in. Okay. Now don't start on anything else before I tell you because it's got to all come in the right order for it all to come together nicely. So we've got our eyes. And then with our black we're going to make a little nose. Now it's a bit like, it's going to be a bit like a pig snout but it's teeny. Like a little, little snout. Now make sure you leave space here to draw those brown bits around the eyes, but they don't come until later, okay? And for our snout, we're going to draw a little flat circle with two circles inside, like in a snout, so like a pig snout a bit, but teeny, but small. <laughs> and then you're going to colour in these areas here. Okay. Let's get these looking beautiful. Now I think it's good to have a try at all of these as well because like I say, some people did fantastic. And the ones that I find a bit harder. Now for I'm gonna talk you through this one. For a cute smile for our little snuff a sloth, rather than just doing a straight a, a straight smile, I thought I'd show you a wiggly smile. Do you want me to show you? <laughs> so it starts off looking a bit like a sad smile, a sad, sad smile, a sad face. But then what it does, if you do the sad bit ending around the edges of the nose and then up at the ends, here's a very cute little smile that we've got on our little sloth. <laughs> now this is the big sloth, this is daddy. Okay. So we're going to draw a shape around this now in a dark brown if you've got it. If you're doing it in pencil, don't worry, just do it all in pencil. Starting from the middle of his forehead, not too low because you want to make sure that he's got space for those, it's almost like superhero mask, isn't it? Those uh, little dark areas. I'm going to make a little shape like an apple around his face. Try and keep it quite close in if you can. I know that I can wander off sometimes doing these. Okay. And then we're going to need to do our little superhero eyes. <laughs> and all we have to do for that, starting a little bit lower if you can, doesn't matter if not, starting from the edges bit lower than the eye it does help a little bit because that's what they look like. Do a little line around the eye and back to the edge again. 
and colour it in. Did you know that sloths can swim? I didn't know that sloths could swim. Brand new information. They are actually faster at swimming than they are at moving on the, on the uh, in the trees. I think yes. When I was looking into it this morning, um, and they uh, can actually hold their breaths underwater for forty minutes. What? Because they can slow their uh, metabolism. Probably a bit of a big word for you guys, but not for the older ones or the cleverer ones. But they can slow everything in their body down enough to make them not need as much air. So they can hide underwater if they need to. What do we think? Looks like a superhero, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, I'm glad that Ted and Hannah like the snake, Rachel. Lovely. Lovely stuff. Now we're going to do, I'm glad we've got some sloth fans, daddy sloth, do, 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 do. sorry if I've got that in any grown-ups heads, <gasps> right, then we're going to do a little tuft of hair on the top of this sloth's head, just, just on the top, ready, I've got the lighter brown for this, and you see just a little zigzag, like you're doing a little tuft of grass, and then we're going to do Follow that line round again. So this is actually the top of the sloth's head. They have all these crazy markings on. And there we have the top of our sloth's head. Looking pretty cute so far. So he's going to be hanging onto a branch up here. So we're going to draw. Now you can either draw it as a line or you can draw it as um, a little wiggly tufty line. Um, so I'm gonna draw it. I'll do. Might do some tufty lines afterwards because I can rub out. I'll do it like this for you to begin with. But if you wanted to do them like this, absolutely be my guess and have them all pointing down. Because did you know that sloths are actually built so that they can spend most ninety percent of their life upside down. So you know how if we sit upside down on the sofa or, you know, try and do a handstand, you can only do it for so long, can't you? Because all the blood goes to your head. <laughs> you start feeling a bit funny and dizzy, don't you? Um, and, uh, yeah, you start feeling a bit funny and dizzy. But they're built with their organs in all the right places so that they can spend most of their life upside down. And as such, all of their... You know when you stroke um, a cat, all their fur goes backwards, don't they? Off the back, so you can stroke them nice and easily. All of a sloth's hair, if you were going to hold a, a sloth like a cat, all of it points upwards, because they spend most of their time upside down. I know, super crazy facts. So, draw a line coming down from the top of the head. So we've got the one arm going up out the top, it'll make sense afterwards, believe me. And then one going down. Okay. It's quite nice to show it as being a bit furry. <laughs> and then they have little claws. I'm going to do these in black. Just so they can grip onto the trees. Okay. We're going to get onto our baby sloth soon. Uh, now I know there was somebody, uh, oh no, this is really bad. Don't worry if it's not going well. Come back and try again. Don't worry. Oh, what's that one? What are the trees? They're only coming out of the trees to poo. <laughs> Very true. Once a week, I think. Once a week, they come out of the trees to poo. And they dig a little hole with the tail. Okay, we all keep in track, keep in track of it, please. If you're ahead, just be patient for the younger ones for me. Okay, so now we're going to draw the back, which is going to go round here. Both of its legs are going to be up in the air, hanging onto a branch, and its back is going to go around here. So let's do a line. 
going a little bit further down and you can either do it as one line or you can do it you can add some hairs sloping downwards and then move the um, and then have the bun a little bit of a tail that's what they dig their dig their poo hole with sorry and then we're gonna have a leg coming up here so mm, shall we draw a branch just to make life a bit easier so we know what we're aiming for let's draw the starts of a branch down here Okay, so I have it going quite, still quite high. We're going to have it up here. We're going to have a leg and we're going to have a little baby sloth in here as well. So don't lose track. I am going to have to move on to the next bit. So leg going straight up with little claws. Like three blades of grass going up onto the onto your branch. That's the bottom of the branch there, sorry, I should say. Okay, we'll have more detail on our branch later. Little tufts of hair at the top and then coming down and out into the body here. Now we're going to draw another little sloth here. Now if you are having trouble keeping up maybe leave the leave a little space for the baby sloth and come back to it later because I don't want you rushing it so draw two big eyes make sure there's enough space for his little superhero mask make them cute little eyes because we've got to have time to draw a tiger cub yet and then a little nose I'm just going to do a normal smile on the sloth, the little baby sloth. And then apple around the outside in a light brown. No, dark brown, sorry. Keep it close to the edges of the face. And then follow round okay little tufts of grass on the top follow the edge of the face round and then we're going to draw a little arm now to do this because we just have to show two little bits of the body now a little arm coming round like he's hanging on to his daddy or her daddy don't know why I always opt for he go little claws Aww. and then little edge like that and then we're gonna draw another leg just here just do the same again so it's gonna be on the other side of the branch with those claws peeping over. Oh, sloths are the cutest thing ever, you're absolutely right. Oh, don't worry if you give up. Don't worry. Come back to it later, you just gotta keep trying. Or try a different one. We'll try our tie cub all together. And we've got ourselves a nice sloth hanging in the tree. I was going to spend a little time doing some colouring in on here, but uh we're running out of time guys, but don't worry, don't rush. That's for me to worry about. So I'm going to draw a couple of little branches coming off here with some leaves. So just draw a little stick with a bit of paper, with a bit of uh, a brown and then draw a leaf around the outside and then colour it in. I think our sloth's looking very good. But don't worry, it does take practice. It took me a couple of times of doing this to get it right. But I think you can absolutely do this too. 
Have I got everything on there? I've got all the elements. I'm not missing anything. And you might want a little corny line like, I love hanging out with you on yours. How does it look in comparison? <laughs> See, it doesn't always work out the same, does it? I think I, maybe I could have done with doing my little, the back of my sloth a little bit lower there. Like I say, it doesn't always turn out the same, the right way first time. This is why it's good to do it with pencils, isn't it, as well? Okay, so we've got our sloth. I think it's time we did our tiger cub, isn't it? Oh, don't worry. The, the video will go straight up on Facebook afterwards. After I've finished. And you can skip to the part where you've gotten, if you've gotten stuck or if you want to have a bit more time whilst I'm talking then you just rewind to it that's absolutely fine right we're going to do a tiger cub now so fresh sheet of paper guys let's get drawing our tiger cub so we're going to be drawing a nice head here nice body nice tail and what makes it a cub is that it's going to have what you're going to tell with the drawing is that the eyes are bigger the ears are bigger and those paws are bigger too Okay. Did I forget the eye mask on it? Oh gosh. Oh, do you know what? I forgot the eye mask on my uh, on my drawing here, didn't I? Oh, rookie mistakes. That was some good spotting there. Right, Willis Silverstone's daughter or son. I'm sorry, I can't remember which which name you are. Okay, let's get drawing our tiger cub. So for our tiger cub, we are going to need black and orange. It's nice and simple. Nice and simple for the tiger cub. Oh, maybe a blue, because when tiger cubs are young, they actually have blue eyes. So if you wanted to give your tiger cub blue eyes, you absolutely can. Okay, so we're going to do some cute eyes over here, make sure that we're all in shot. Okay. So again, we're going to do some big, cute eyes. <laughs> and then we're going to have, now for this one I'm going to add an extra shine by adding an extra little line on there, oh she's gone on that one now, extra little line there and then two dots, you can just do two dots if you like but it just adds an extra shine, extra bit of cuteness if you've got big shiny eyes, colour around the outside. So that's a line there and then two dots and then colour all this bit in. <laughs> Expertly done there Parkinson. <laughs> the old squiggle. Right. So we've got two eyes there, oval shaped, yes, squash circles. Oh, I'm very much done. Don't worry, you can watch the rest if you like and just, uh, I like watching people drawing. Or you can, uh... oh, well, let's do the next bit now. So uh, we need to put our nose on now and it's going to look like a second smile. It's going to look like a, a, <laughs> a smile, this, but it's actually the nose. So it's going to start. From where, from the middle, from the middles of this, starting to end by the middles of the uh, of the eyes there. So it's going to go like this. How's that? Oof. Oh, bye, Diane. <laughs> Do give this one a try because I bet we're going to see some good ones on this one. So, little line, little line like that with another line underneath so its snout. Okay. Looks like a smile, doesn't it? But that's just the that's just the bottom of its nose. Its smi its smile will come in a second. And we're just gonna draw a little line underneath there. It's gonna look super cute. Oh yay, it's good to hear there's some good ones. <laughs> Woohoo Okay. 
and uh, so we've got our little line there and we're going to make, a, make another line so it's going to make get the shape of our little cheeks but I want to get them down to the right area because you don't want to do them too small or too big because it's a club isn't it so we want them to go to a certain point so make a point round about the middle of the eyes and a little bit further down that's where you want to do a line to okay little point of the eyes a little bit further down just there and then it's just going to go up a little bit just to maybe half an eyes width outwards see if you can see what you can do don't worry if it's not the same and then we're going to draw a little teeny mouth just like that and a little lip <laughs> and then now this is where it's going to get interesting is our ears now I think I may have done mine too big <gasps> it's going to be a very squished in tiger cub perhaps now our ears are actually almost round <laughs> So what you want to do is start them round about the middles of the eyes, a bit further up, give them a bit of space for the forehead. Okay, and it's going to be going round like this, almost looking a bit like mouse ears, but not as big as Mickey Mouse ears. I'm going to be going round like this. <laughs> so there is a might be a teeny point I've done a point on this one because I've run out of board <laughs> and then what you can do is add a little point on when you're doing some hair in a bit okay it'll make sense later then we're going to do some grassy bits grassy tufts of grass on top okay oh and see some pics of some tigers Okay, tufts of grass on top, bringing the two together, and then we're going to do some tufts of grass here. I say tufts of grass, it's like fur, it is fur, but it's just that's how I draw grass. <laughs> and you just want to do them like lots of different sizes going in different directions. Doesn't matter, however it turns out for you, I bet it'll look great. It gets better with every one. That's better with every one that you draw. Okay. Might look a bit strange at the moment, but I promise it'll look better in a minute. Can we add some detail? Right, now I'm going to ask you to draw a line on the inside of the ear here. Just like that. Do the same on the other side. I'm going to draw some hair. They've got hairy ears, haven't they? These uh, lovely furry ears. These tigers. Did you know on a tiger's ears, there's a white spot on the back, and so they're black with a white spot on the back. So on the backs of their ears, have oh, I got a picture? And um, that is so. I did get a picture of. Now there's a bit of debate as to reason why they have that. Can you see, guys? Ooh. And I think. There's lots of things of people saying that it's because so so they nobody will attack them from behind or other reasons like that. But I think it's more to be intimidating, and I'll show you why in a little while once we've drawn a bit more on our tiger. Um, so next we want to draw the back of our tiger. Our little tiger cub and it's going to be a line going just down following down from the back of the bottom of the ear anyone who's done my workshops before know I tend to kind of have have them sat like this okay and then going round into a bum and then Again, it's probably about the size on the body's about the size of the head. Body's quite small in comparison. And then we're going to draw a back leg. 
upside down J and then big pause so backwards curly curls three backwards curly curls follow the line backwards got the back of a back paw there not to draw the tail now you can do as well nice thick tail nice and thick might make my ears look a little bit more cat like because it does look a bit like a mouse at the moment and that's not what I want at all so if you add some hairs a bit of black and colour in a little bit because those ears the, that, that little area that I drew a little line for there wants to be black Okay, we'll get drawing some tiger stripes soon as well. Okay, then we're going to get some front paws on. So we'll start with the body so we know where to draw the paws away from. So if you start from the middle of this cheek, this outer cheek, and do a J shape down. You make sure that you leave enough space for a paw to come in, so not the right the way down, because we want a paw to go in here, bit far myself. And your paw, your front paw, will start around about the middle of the other cheek, a bit further down. I've done it as a straight one, I've done it curved on my picture. Mm. I'm going to stick with it, guys, because that's the way you'll agree we've done it. Three backwards C's, a little line, and then a bit of an ankle. We've got front paw. Follow that rest of that belly down, then. I think we're doing okay, guys. You, what you've got to do though with the baby tigers is give them big paws. Yes, I know what you're thinking with it being bit, looking a bit big for a baby tiger. Possibly. Sometimes these things turn out different every time, I'm afraid. Certainly for me as an illustrator, it's just the way that it goes, unfortunately. <laughs> Especially doing it on whiteboard uh, straight out for you guys, following around. So let's do the back paws. What you want to try and do is big paws, because that is what makes them... Cubs. If you look at any pictures of cubs, they have big eyes and big paws. Maybe I might make my eyes a little bit bigger because maybe you guys would be able to do that too. Because for some reason, I have managed to make this look a little. Okay. So, what are we missing now? We want to have some stripes on our tiger, don't we? And some making it look a bit more tiger like. That's what's going to make it. So, what you want to do is draw the shapes in a very particular way. So, if you do them a bit ziggy zaggy, it shows the fur again. You see how I've done them? Because that's what they look like on the pictures, isn't it? Like little tufts of grass again. Please send me your pictures. There'll be some that you've done well and some that you're not so proud of. But that's okay. This is what practicing is, isn't it? This is how we do it. What else could we have? Could I have some, some going out from the... Get those black stripes on first because then you can do the orange ones. What are we doing for time? We're nearly there now. So on the back, I've definitely done my tiger too big. Never mind. You have to admit when you've done something wrong, don't you? So you do if you do them in the areas where I'm doing them here, just coming off the back. And 
And just coming off the front of the paws. Nothing on the front because that's all left white. And on the back of the tiger's tail as well. Do you want to see a happy tiger in an, as an upset tiger? Because this is the reason why they have the white spots on the backs. Whilst you draw your orange bits. So the orange bits you want to do in between. You can either colour it all in or just do it all in different areas. But what you want to make sure, if I show you a picture of a tiger here, they have some bits that are white and black, don't they? Around the eyes. Some around the cheeks, some around the mouth, so don't colour it all in orange if you don't want to, or you can just do it all in orange, it'll still look like a tiger. I tell you what, my tiger looks a little bit like a butch rat today, doesn't it? But hey, just like you guys, I bet you've got good drawings and bad drawings today. <laughs> Maybe all of them are fantastic, in which case I definitely want to see them all. But yes, that's a happy tiger. You can't see any black, uh, black dots on the black, white dots on the back of the ears, can you? There, on that one. But then you can do when he's looking a little bit intimidated. That's the reason why I think that they do it because they want to look a little. They want to show very easily when they show that when they put their uh, ears back. I don't know if any of you have cats. I'm not going to show that tiger anymore. Show you better, my better tiger. Cats do like that when they're happy, aren't they? And then when they get upset, they go and they show the backs of their ears, don't they? I think they do it so that they can show other tigers when they're angry. Because if you're wanting to show predators from behind, if you want to show, show people that might be going after you from behind, you won't be going after a tiger, would you? I think the, t this, this, the orange and black stripes would be enough. Oh, dearie me. So there you go. The joys of live uh, <laughs> of live drawing. Sometimes it does not turn out the way that you planned. This is the way that I've got mine. If you want to have any reference from this one, and then the, there is the pic. There, there will be the pictures on. Uh, oh, I've got my wire back or the wrong way around on that one. Um, you can use that as a bit of a reference and pause when you're watching on replay. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Mine's the worst too. Hey, we all go through bad days, don't we? I can draw. <laughs> I want you guys to send me your pictures. I would love to see if there's any pictures of you guys with your drawings, if you've got your Father's Day cards together. Um, I would love, love, love to see um, what you guys have been drawing because I bet there's been some really good ones today. So you can show me all of them. You can show me your favourites. Um, you can show me the ones that are not so good because, oh, dearie me, I don't know. It's looking a little bit dodgy, isn't it? What can you do? What can you do? Have you made them into a card so you can stick your pictures onto the front of a piece of card and then make that your Father's Day card? You can maybe make a pop-up, couldn't you? Or what else could you do to make your, your Father's Day cards a bit more interesting? Don't be negative. <laughs> oh yeah, Diane, don't be, don't be, don't Put yourself down. I shouldn't put myself down because you just have these days, don't you? Where they're not, not maybe not quite as good as what you'd hope, but that's okay, isn't it? Um, oh, Daisy on Instagram's having problems being able to see the, uh, being able to hear us on Instagram. Hope you're okay, Daisy. Um, oh, don't be like that. I'm sure you're doing fantastically well. Look at the ones that you that you're proud of. Think about the ones that you've done really well today. I'll look back over your pictures and see which ones that you like, which ones you want to put on a card. Because what you could do is tr is see which one that you enjoy doing the most and maybe try doing it again. So I'm going to put this video straight up, and you'll be able to watch it and skip forward to the bits where you wanted to where where the where you were, where I was drawing a sloth or where I was drawing a tiger cub or where I was drawing a snake. You can try it again and then put it on the front of a card but have that be what you're doing this afternoon maybe and try it again oh you can do a white tiger yeah you could do um do one of the polar tigers absolutely oh fat rat <laughs> i'm gonna have big big waves from everybody 
please please send me your pictures there'll be a post up on facebook um on instagram you can tag me in your posts um and i would absolutely love 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 to see them and i can post them up on sunday um so i'll i'll hang fire putting them up and unless you put them in the comments in which case that's absolutely fine um and then i'll do a big post of all of my favorites on sunday so i would love to see them maybe spend some time doing some coloring this afternoon well it's been so so lovely to have you and and um, we'll have to see what we'll do next week i'm thinking about doing some different workshops at the moment so if you've got any ideas maybe we can do something different next week i'd love to see you i want to see some big waves from everybody ah!